Honestly, I truly do not know when it started. I mean, ever since I was a little kid, I've always been fascinated with this word. This one word. Love. I tell you, Pumba, this stinks. Oh, sorry. Not you. Them. Him. Her. Alone. What's wrong with that? I can see what's happening. What? And they don't have a clue. Who? Oh. They'll fall in love, and here's the bottom line. Our trio's down to two. Oh. The sweet caress of twilight. There's magic everywhere. And with all this romantic atmosphere, disasters in the air. I got older, and as I got older, well, I tried to figure this thing out, so I dated. I mean, I dated a lot of girls, a lot of girls, because I wanted something that I saw on television. Whether it was real or not, I wanted that relationship. Boys, you've got a lot to learn about women. Carlton has obviously been watching me in action. <laughs> Now, Will, your Aunt Vivian can be quite bossy at times, but uh, when she starts bossing me around, I don't let it bother me. I just say no in a strong, masculine voice, and when I say no, she jumps. Excuse me. <laughs> what did you say? I don't know. How long have you been there? I came in on your Aunt Vivian can be quite bossy sometimes. Oh, well, you didn't hear the part where I said, boys, the rest of the statement is completely untrue. Philip, you better sleep with one eye open. I gotta just where I want. I'm gonna leave, leave, all right? I'm a man, Gina. I'm a B.I. Right. This is childish. I want you out. I don't even know why you're still here. Step! I want... Step! <laughs> Really, whether you like it or not, you're always going to be my girl. Well, it, it was a wonderful ride, Dwayne, but this is where I get off. This is the first Christmas present I ever gave you. I can't, I can't believe you're going to give this back. It's kind of hard to look at Bunny anymore. Okay, well, I guess... <clears throat> You got to do what you feel is right. Mm-hmm. Me too. You see these couples? They went through things. And they always found a way to come back. But this life we live in is not a sitcom. It's real. And these are the real facts. So out of my frustration and trying to answer one question, how do you really know that someone is the one for you? Now, everyone I would ask this question to, they would say they just knew. But love can't be that common. So I sat down with a couple of couples that I know just to see if love was just that common. And what I discovered was love, well, love is truly uncommon. I'm checking your smile, working your back like it's going out of style. Shake just a little bit faster, shake just a little now, girl. I'm dying to meet you, so let's mess around. Uh, long story short, I, her mom had pers kept pursuing me for about a year and a half, and every time she saw me, she was always like. Um, are you still single or are you dating anyone? And 
when I finally told her that I was single, she uh, she brought Shanita by a couple of times. I wasn't kind of attracted to her at the first sight, but uh, one, <laughs> one Tuesday night she came and uh, she was all dolled up and uh, uh, I bagged her groceries and I've been bagging her groceries ever since then. So it just it was just. Why uh, we have to go through his line? Like, right. Okay, so. <laughs> Um, I was working at Wendy's. Tommy lived on the same street that I worked, um, the restaurant that I worked at. So him and all his friends came into the restaurant and I knew all of his friends, but I didn't know him. So I gave my number, um, to one of his friends. Calvin. <laughs> it was a Calvin? Mm -hmm. I gave it to Calvin and I told Calvin, hey, can you give my number to your boy? And he gave it to him, and that's how we officially, we officially met really over the phone. And then that next day in school, that's when we officially met. And they were looking for some weed. <laughs> Thank you. <That's, laughs> they were looking for I some wasn't, weed. I wasn't, I wasn't, I promise. <laughs> I, I, was you like I was with somebody, I was with somebody who was, mm -hmm. and we found a group of guys who was selling it, mm -hmm. well, who, who was selling something. Mm -hmm. And then, um, which was his brother with one of them, who told us, you know, that they didn't sell weed. They sold whatever they sold. But he said, my brother smokes weed. So he called Sean, he called Sean who took us to a place. Um, and literally, well, when that happened, that's, we just met that way. But I wasn't thinking about him. Yeah, and I wasn't thinking about her. But his brother, because we started talking to his brother, the person I was with, um, we were friends with him. So he told Sean that I liked him. And he told me that Sean liked me. Um, it's a, it's a very interesting story of how we met. Um, we actually met at my cousin's baby shower in Columbus, Georgia. And I was going to the baby shower and I was supposed to work that night at the Atlanta Hawks game where I do, of course, acrobatic slam dunking. When I went to the baby shower, and it's actually my first baby shower ever going to in life, um, <laughs> they had desserts at the baby shower. The person who just happened to do the desserts was... Dewan. And they were horrible. The desserts were horrible. You could tell they were made with sadness, <laughs> but it didn't matter to me because she was so beautiful. <laughs> and when I met her, she had on like, um, I think she had on like a stocking or do-rag on her head. Yeah. She was working in the kitchen. Mm -hmm. And I was like, if she can look that good dressed <laughs> down, then she is definitely my wife. <laughs> and I literally walked out of the kitchen and, and told my family yeah. members, why did you keep my wife from me? <laughs> we got the schedule to read a Bible um, in a year, and we did that the year before. We actually ended up going a little bit into our marriage. Um, and that, that was really groundbreaking because um, that, oh, and we cut off, no, we still, do we still have cable? Oh, no, we still had cable then. Exactly. But, you know, it really forced us to, <clears throat> excuse me, have a conversation. There were a lot of conversations about that reading the Bible in a year. Because it was like, man, did you read that? I can't believe that happened. It was just like, you know, ooh, Game of Thrones. Man, did you see what happened tonight? You know, the same type of conversations. And um, it really forced us to open up a lot about our thoughts, our beliefs, and um, things that we hold near and dear and things that we thought were important. Um, and just getting on the same page. And I thought that was good. Well, actually, we were friends. Mm -hmm. We became friends. So when we um, first talked on the phone, because he had a girlfriend, mm -hmm. um, we actually just end up being really cool. Mm -hmm. So we were not in a relationship probably for about the first six or seven months. Mm -hmm. We just literally were talking on the phone. We would hang out. We would hang out. We like, go but out. it was strictly like on a friend type thing. Like mm -hmm. he would be with all his friends and I would just be there with him and we would, cause we were all in school together. Mm -hmm. So we really literally were friends. Mm -hmm. The first date uh, that we had with each other, mm -hmm. TGI Friday, we shared a, uh, a two for one. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it was a, a uh, chicken and macaroni and cheese. Oh, no, I mean mashed, my, potatoes. mashed potatoes. Yeah, and uh, we went to see the movie G uh, when they first came out, and then uh, we went to the park, and it was the first night that I actually enjoyed um, somebody, and we didn't kiss, we didn't do anything. It was just straight fun, and uh, that was probably one of the best dates I ever had, and I knew right then like she was the one.
Oh, it was, <laughs> I know, because you, I got locked up. And um, she bought me these Jordans. And yeah, I had, prior to him being arrested. Yeah, prior to me being arrested. And I had the shoes on, and I kicked this guy. So they took my shoes and had me up in the cell with no, no shoes and everything. So I called her up and I told her about it, like, look, I'm locked up. I knew I would get out like in a day or two. So, so I was like, don't worry about it. She went up to the jail and talked to the, C, um, the COs in there and made them give me some shoes. And I was like, wow, this girl is super smart. Like she fought, my mom wasn't even dead nothing like that. Yeah, I was just been up in there. And I was like, this is the one right here. Like she got, she's the ride or die. How did I know? Mm -hmm. I don't know. How did we know that we was? Well, when I first saw Tommy, we were in high school. He was on the second floor. And he was at his locker, and I was at mine. And I peeked over, and I saw him. And I was like, oh my god. He is so fine. <laughs> that ain't changed. <laughs> and so I, um, I actually knew all of his friends. And then once we actually met and we talked on the phone for the first time, we talked on the phone the entire night. Like we just literally clicked. And so from that moment on, I knew that he was going to be my husband. He didn't know it, but I knew it that first night. <laughs> yeah, I knew when she jumped out of the car chasing me. <laughs> yeah, that's when I knew. Don't say that on video. <laughs> it's true. You know, it was, it was kindness in his spirit. He had a very gentle and kind spirit. Mm -hmm. And he was that way with everyone. And I was very attracted to that. And for me, a lot of the people that I had been around at the time, they just, they were not that way. And the, the love and the kindness and everything that I was receiving from him and that he was giving to others, I just, I knew I needed to be in that space. Say? Um, as a couple, probably the hardest thing I think that we had to deal with is when Tommy probably went to jail when he got incarcerated. Um, that was probably one of the hardest, because we've had a lot. <laughs> but I think that was probably one of the hardest because, um, it seemed like every time uh, Tommy got incarcerated, I was pregnant. Mm -hmm. And so it would be during that transition of me about to have a baby. And so that was, that was hard for us. I would say in the beginning, uh, her mom not liking me, uh, giving her ultimatum that if she's going to be with me, then she had to leave the house. And me, you know, letting Rhonda know, you know, if this is what she truly wanted to do, she can leave the house and, you know, come stay with me. And, um, you know, that was challenging because she didn't speak to her mom for like two and a half years when that first happened. And it was just a strain on the relationship. And um, that was probably the hardest. But I know, like for this argument we just had, we, re like, we re recently had a three-day situation. Mm. You still came to me and said, you know, I want you to know I do love you. Like, this always... Yeah. No, like we always let the other person know. Like we still, I still love you, but I'm mad. Yeah, and you know what? We've been together for 16 years. Even though how mad we ever been, I never slept out the bed and she never slept. We always go back to our bed and lay down. No matter, yeah. we made that promise to each other. No matter how mad we are, <clears throat> we meeting in the bedroom. Yeah, we, we don't might spend not, a night out. We don't do nothing. We don't, I don't come down here. We might not be touching there. We might got that nice. <laughs> we, we have a barrier. <laughs> Yeah, we yeah. do sometimes, then, but we on the bed together <laughs> every night. I'm uncomfortable sleep because you are like making sure. <laughs> but but that's not the worst. I don't mind the bury. It's like when you try to take all my pillows and you like leave me one pillow, and I can't take my pillow. And I think she did that on purpose because I was like this. She knew it because I got like three pillows I like to use. And, and I because you're so mad, he won't say nothing. I know. I just be with my one pillow, and she take all the covers and everything. I just be like, like oh man, she doing me wrong. Make me mad. I know, it's, it's the worst. I don't like, it's, it's, it's terrible. I'll let you go first. I'll let you go first on that. Um, parenting. Mm -hmm. Parenting, um, when I was pregnant, I asked another um, associate, I said, hey, you know, 
what's going to be the biggest change, you know, like what's different, you know, in your relationship with, once you have kids? And he was just like, it's a game changer. And I was just like, duh. I mean, I know that, but, you know, he's like, no, it's just, it's going to change everything. And I was like, oh, okay. And I couldn't really grasp how big that statement was um, until the kids got here. And then, you know, going from one child to two kids and then, you know, finding out you have a child that has special needs, it's just, it's just doing the most. And it's always a struggle to be the best parent you can be, but at the same time, you have to be the same spouse that you can be. And then you got to throw self-care in there. You know, it's, it's a balancing act like nothing I have ever experienced. And it's always a challenge because you're always pulling. You're pulling for yourself because you need that self-care time so that you can be the best parent, so that you can be the best spouse that you can be. Um, and, you know, somehow it comes together. There, I don't know how much balance there is. It doesn't always balance out all the time, but it does come together. Um, but it is a challenge because you really have to dig deep and kind of figure out what's going to be best for the family unit all the time. You know, you realize how selfish you are once you have kids because you can't, oh, I think I'm going to go to Target and drop $100 on some stuff that's on sale and I'm going to get some new makeup, some new hair products, I'm going to buy some Marvel movies. You know, you can't, you can't, not saying we were doing that before, right. but I, I just mentioned that because, I mean, you just can't do a lot of the things that you just want to do. It's like, oh, let me make sure I have diapers. Do I have diaper pair aligners? And then when you want to get up and go, it's like, wait, let me organize child care. Let me get this done. And then you throw another monkey wrench in when you have more than one child. And then depending on the age and, you know, the temperament of that child, if your child has special needs or not. So it's, to me, that, that has rocked my world, having kids. And um, in turn, it definitely changes your relationship. I think it's changed our relationship for sure. Yeah, um, I think the hardest thing was for our marriage is um, uh, 2009, February 2009, when we, uh, when we lost our first child. Um, it, was a, um, it was a scary, dark moment. Um, like, I, I love God, I love everything about God. Um, I was just in the prime of, um, or just the, the beginning of my, me starting ministry and me really just going hard for God. And then, boom, we get hit with losing our girl. Um, and I think the, the most hardest part was just a week before that happened, we had literally just bought everything for her room. Uh, bed, crib, chair, decor. My best friend was coming over to, uh, matter of fact, my best friend had just came over to help set everything up. Me and my dad and my best friend were just putting everything together. and. You know, we were just feeling the energy and we're just like, man, we can't believe it that, you know, when June comes, you know, we'll be, you know, June or July comes, we'll be looking at our new baby. Like, we were just super excited. And, um, dude, like, literally a week later, we got hit with that. And it happened while I was at work. Dealing with something detrimental like this, I felt like it really stretched us brought us closer together and it just made us stronger. Like, it took him a very long time to get over it. It took me a while to get over it too, but I kinda like, you know, somebody had to be that, that person who, okay, we gotta bounce back. You know what I mean? Yeah. And I was that person and I kinda, you know, helped him, um, not so much get over it, but I kind of helped him, you know, like strengthen his faith back, you know, because he was just like, he was mad at God, mm -hmm. you know, that this happened and we still didn't know why, you know, God allowed us, but um, it's just, like I said, it just strengthened our relationship and our faith level, yeah. you know what I mean? Um, it got stronger. He, I mean, I, I can think of something. It's time to get back to real life mm -hmm. and, 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 and do this life thing together, you know, as partnership. 
because we got a lot going on, you know, the kids, bills outside of our house, and we got to check that at the door and um, get it together. You know the day that we had that, that big party that you came mm-hmm. to, the, the game night? Yeah. We had a terrible day that early that day. You would never know, because when you came here, it's time to get our love back together. You know, that's, that's in the past. Let's, let's get it going on, you know. Yeah, I guess it's communication. Like, mm. after, because it's just a terrible feel. Like, I hate when we're arguing and we're not talking. So, it, it doesn't last long for us. This recent three-day thing was long. Yeah, that was long. Um, and it wasn't like we weren't talking for three days. We made up, but then we, the ar- because we didn't resolve the issue, so we kept, it kept coming back up. Um, and that, you know, dragged it out. But typically, we'll, one of us comes to each other and we just, we talk it out and understand, you know, um, that it was a miscommunication because that's usually what it is and try to fix it because it, it sucks. Prayer. Our, <laughs> our faith in God. Um, yeah. Our prayer. Because when you go through trials and tribulations, um, you really have to have a strong spiritual foundation. Mm-hmm. Um, your relationship can't really have a lot of loose links, you know. Um, if you if you got a weak link and you going through a trial, yeah. then it's just going to intensify and the link going to break, you know. Um, so the one thing that I do love about our relationship is it is spiritually strong and the foundation is built off, um, off Christ and sex. I mean, you can never, you know. Facts. I mean, sex is, <laughs> you can always bounce back from a tragedy with sex. <laughs> you know, like you can be mad. You come home from jail, you have sex. Oh, God. Your mom not speaking to you, you have sex. <laughs> you know. She's a sexaholic. I am. <laughs> <laughs> it works. <laughs> but keeping Christ first. Definitely. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And sex. Go ahead, say it. And sex. No, no, no. It's Jesus. It's Jesus for the camera. Love. So mean. Yeah, she didn't marry me for my singing skills. I can't sing. I'm just, I'm messing with you. I just like to hit that note. You know what I'm saying? Love to me is not always, you know, flowers and, oh, I love you. No. Love to me is Hold sacrifice. Hold on, stop. She's so serious when she say that, for real, though. <laughs> sacrifice. Sacrifice. No more flowers. Sacrifice. God is love. We know that. And when I think about love, and especially, you know, as we're approaching um, Resurrection Sunday, you know, I just think about God was like, yo, son, like, I brought you in, you in here, (laughs) but the way this world's set up, I'm gonna need you to save everybody. So you gotta die. It's gonna be brutal. It's gonna hurt. It's it's gonna suck. But then I'm gonna need you to come on back and I need you to be nice to everybody. And they gonna hate you. They gonna talk about you. They gonna use your name in vain. They gonna be real ratchet. But I need you to just keep on loving them because they're gonna end up being great. And for me, I mean, that's, that's essentially what your marriage is. And then, it's, you know, even with your kids and even with your family, because it's like, you know, every day is not gonna be great. It's gonna be brutal. You know, the world is gonna come for you. Your job is going to come for you. Your, your spouse, your, your kids, they're going to come for you. They may be having a bad day or something. I don't know. But, you know, that love has to be there. And you have to be able to say, you know what? You know, I'm here for a greater purpose than to just be myself. I have to be able to share this love with others and to allow others to see this love and this goodness in me and to just unselfishly and knowingly and to want to put that love into the atmosphere. So as it relates to the relationship, to me, it's the same thing. You know, just like Philip said, you know, before you get married, you see what this person does and they have different things or quirks and things that they may even develop and manifest after you've been together. 
But at the end of the day, it's like, I don't care that your cup on the table. I leave my cup on the table all the time. And not intentionally, I just don't think about it because that's just how I roll. That cup gonna be on the table. We gonna be 50 years <laughs> later. My cup gonna still be sitting on the table. You know, but I say that because, <laughs> and not intentionally, not like, I'm gonna stress you out. I'm gonna leave this cup on the, on the table. table. <laughs> Ain't nobody knowing that. That's just spiteful and trifling. But, you know, at the end of the day, you know, Philip is like, you know what? I'm going to choose love because everything is not going to be to my liking. Everything is not going to be just what I want it to be and how it just must be. And stuff is going to come for me. The devil's going to be in your ear. Unsolicited advice is going to be in your ear. Facebook scrolling, everybody in their perfect relationship out in over water, bungalow in Malaysia, chilling, you know, kid free. It's all, it's all there. But at the end of the day, you still choose love. Sacrifice. Wow. If I could put it in, in, in this one word, it's sacrifice. You know, um, treating people the way they want to be treated, you know, and, and don't care about your own feelings or expecting anything from somebody, just just doing it out of, out of love. Unconditional trust, mm. unconditional support, um, being there in spite of what we have, in spite of what it looks like. Just really, man, just being with the person because of who that person is. You know, um, we get so caught up in the glitz and the glamour and the lights, but real love is I support you no matter what, mm. you know? And so I think just having that perception is what love means to me. <laughs> What's the one thing you love about me? You first. Her craziness. <laughs> crazy as all get out. Do you think I'm crazy? Look at her eyes. <laughs> That's crazy. <laughs> I grew up in a hard, hard family, like um, heartless or whatever. Like nobody says I love you and you never knew. And, and, and it took her to show me what love was. Her eyes and her smile. It's crazy that how I feel about my wife, like this is my soulmate. Cause I'm oh, my best, best friend I ever had in my life. Cause I, I don't want to go days without her. Like I never been like that with nobody. I, I'm looking forward to talking to her about my day. And um, yeah. I would say her honesty, um, integrity, you know, her spirit to just go. She's a go getter, which motivates me a lot. Um, how she loves her family unconditionally, and then how she supports me unconditionally. Um, it's just amazing to know that you have such a partner, a lifelong partner, who love you like that, and that's why I love her like that. Oh, baby. Oh. <sighs> what can I say after that, Trey? I mean. <laughs> I heard of um, um, someone very mature, they've been married for 44 years, and uh, he looked at me, he said, Tim, uh, in order for you to be successful and being in your marriage is to not only love that person, but to like that person. Um, <laughs> date, get to know the person, because that seems like um, something that is fading away. Mm. Um, people just now just jump into a relationship. They don't know the person. Um, get to know them. <clears throat> you know, decide if you even like the person. <laughs> you know, if you even like the person. Um, yeah. That's what I would say first. You know, uh, make sure that they, their foundation is the same as yours. Make sure that their path is the same as yours. You know, sometimes you get into these relationships and... You don't even, you don't like kids. He like kids and 
you don't know it because Absolutely. y'all ain't even had a conversation, you know. But just get to know the person, you know, yeah. And I'll sum it up like this. When you're single, you can be selfish. When you get married, you have to be selfless. Um, I would say enjoy each other. Mm -hmm. Have fun. Like, I think we, we take relationships too seriously, and then we get, in, we get too involved, and there's no foundation of fun and just enjoying each other. Right. Like, that's what we did. For a whole year, you know, it wasn't about all the extra stuff, man. It was literally about, man, let's just go hang out. Let's go to the movies. Let's go shoot pool. Yeah. Let's just go enjoy each other. Let's go play golf. Let's go whatever. Like, we just always finding something and just go hang out. And I think any advice for anybody is just enjoy each other. Like, yeah. enjoy. Build a friendship. Yeah. Complacency. A lot of times in life, we all may do it at different times, different forms, different fashion. But complacency to me is the all out form of ending any relationship before it ever begins. You can go first. Communication. Talk, find out about that person before you commit yourself to that person. Because a lot of my friends, guy friends, I, I know, and they got with somebody, didn't even know that person didn't want to have babies and, you know, or a house or, I mean, you got to talk about everything under the sun. Because some things you can, you can be with that person and, and you'd be like, okay, that doesn't matter. But it's, it's a lot of stuff that does matter. And now you, a year in this relationship, and now you're trying to make this person change their mind. A person's never going to change their mind. A person, what they want is what they want. So I think a, a big thing is talking. You know, like find out and keep talking forever. Like, you know, oh, yeah. while you're in a relationship, you know, because I still find out stuff new. And I've been with my wife for 16 years, and I'm still learning. Communication. Um, first, talk about money. Talk about money. Talk about your goals. Um, talk about family. Talk about um, your health. And sex. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You think I'm playing, but if you don't talk about sex, it may ruin your relationship. <laughs> <laughs> Communicating. Trust. Um, communication. Without without any relationship with any relationship, you need communication. If the communication is not there, then you're not gonna be ever have common ground on the goals that you're trying to reach. So communication has to be there. Like I said before, whether phone, text, email, tele MySpace. MySpace, telekinesis, if you're that advanced, something <laughs> has to happen with the communication. So don't force it. Just Yeah. Just go. Open and honest communication is the key to having a great marriage. Um, and not being ashamed to change. Not being ashamed of, uh, okay, at this moment, there are some things I have to work on. So I think you're always evolving. Uh, Rhonda does something that's so unique. Maybe every six months she'll ask me, what's your favorite movie? What's your favorite food? You know, where's your favorite place to go? Because she know that, you know, we're always changing. Yeah. And so just knowing that, you know, you communicate open and honestly, it will keep your relationship so strong. Seriously. How do you keep your marriage fresh? How do you keep it fresh? Do crazy stuff <laughs> <laughs> out the blue. <laughs> she don't know I come home someday. You know what I'm saying? I might have on a Batman suit. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm just messing with you. <laughs> <laughs> but always just keep it fresh. Keep her guessing. Have her keep you guessing. Don't get comfortable on how you got him or her. And always be willing to change up, going to different places, doing different things. You want to always keep it fresh.